Hello everyone. Information Box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today biotechnology topic on bioreactors. But first, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. In this topic, we have the definition of bioreactor, its design, the principle behind it, parts of the bioreactor and their function, and the different types of bioreactors, applications of bioreactors, and lastly, limitations of bioreactors. Let's begin with the definition of bioreactors. An example of a fermentation vessel is a bioreactor, which is employed in the synthesis of numerous chemicals and biological processes. In order to remove the waste biomass of cultivated microorganisms as well as their products, it is a closed container with suitable arrangements for aeration, agitation, temperature control, and pH control. The following should be included in a bioreactor. Number 1. Regulation of parameters including temperature, pH, pressure, aeration, nutrient feeding, and liquid level. Number 2. Agitation for mixing cells and medium. Number 3. Aeration for aerobic fermentators for oxygen supply. Number 4. Withdrawal of cells and medium. And lastly, number 5. Sterilization and maintenance of sterility. Biomass, metabolites, and antibiotics are produced in bioreactors. So let's understand the design of bioreactors. A bioreactor's design and method of operation are based on the creation of an organism. The ideal circumstances needed for the formation of intended product, the value of the product and its scales of production. The productivity of a bioreactor may be increased and it can produce goods of greater quality for less money. A bioreactor is a device that includes a number of features including an agitator system, an oxygen delivery system, a form control system, and a number of other systems including sampling pots, cleaning, sterilization systems, lines for charging and emptying the reactor, and systems for controlling temperature and pH. The following crucial characteristics must exist in a substance used to make a bioreactor. Number 1. It should not be corrosive. Number 2. Toxic compounds shouldn't be added to the fermentation medium. Number 3. It must be able to withstand the steam sterilizing procedure. Number 4. It need to be capable of withstanding high pressure and enduring pH variations. Lastly, depending on the use, the bioreactor's size might vary significantly. From the microbial cell to the shake flask to the laboratory size fermentator the pilot level to plant scale for big volume some bioreactors are built for small scale fermentation and some are large scale industrial applications kindly don't forget to support this channel by subscribing to it let's understand the bioreactor principle in order for microorganisms to develop optimally and create metabolites for the biotransformation and bioconservation of substrates into desired products, the bioreactor is essential to any biochemical process. Reactors can be designed or created based on the needs of the organisms employed for growth. Reactors are devices that can be used to turn materials with biological origins into palatable goods. They can be used to produce different enzymes and carry out biocatalysis procedures. Let's dig into the parts of bioreactor and their function. With the help of this diagram, you will understand the parts of the bioreactor and where they are located. These reactors have been built to manage parameters including temperature, pH, flow rates, aeration, form control and agitation rates. The amounts of sensors and control devices included into a particular bioreactor determines how many parameters can be monitored and managed. Before creating a fermentator, keep in mind the additional consideration listed in this video and illustrated in this diagram. 
First we have fermentator vessel. A fermentator vessel is a large cylinder that is top and bottom closed and is linked to other pipelines and valves. The vessel's design enables it to function in a controlled environment. There are two common types of fermentator vessels, glass and stainless steel. Small scale companies often employ the glass vessel. It is non-toxic and resistant to corrosion. Whereas the large scale companies employ stainless steel vessels, it can withstand corrosion and pressure. Second, we have heating and cooling apparatus. A cooling jacket that supplies cooling water and seals the fermentator vessels outside is installed. In most cases, heat is produced using thermostatically regulated baths or internal coils and excess heat is dissipated using silicon jackets. Sterilization of the nutrient medium and removal of heat produced during the fermentation in the fermentator require the use of a cooling jacket. Number 3. Aeration System One of the fermentator's key component is the aeration system. To maintain optimum aeration and oxygen availability throughout the culture, a suitable aeration system must be used. To ensure proper aeration in a fermentator, it has two different aeration devices, spargler and impeller. The steering achieves two objectives. It assists in mixing the gas bubbles throughout the liquid culture medium and it aids in mixing the microbial cells through the medium, ensuring that they all have a uniform access to the nutrients. I hope you're getting the knowledge you want from this video. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribing to it. Number 4. Sealing Assembly To ensure appropriate agitation, the steerer's shaft is sealed using the sealing assembly. In the fermentator, there are three types of sealing assemblies. Sealed pack, gland, mechanical seal, magnetic drives. Number 5. Baffles Baffles are placed into fermentators to reduce vocetes and increase aeration. It comprises of metal strips that are readily fastened to the wall. Number 6. Impilers The uniform suspension of microbial cells in various nutritional medium is achieved using impilers. They consist of motorized impiler blades mounted on the lid. When it comes to lowering the size of air bubbles and distributing them evenly throughout the fermentation medium, impiler blades are crucial. The fermentators employ variable impilers, which are divided into the following categories. Disc turbines, open variable pitch turbine. Number 7. Spargler in order to provide sterile air to a fermentation tank, a sperger is utilized. It aids in giving the vessel the correct aeration. Pressured air is discharged through tiny 5 to 10 mm holes located in the spargel pipes. There are three varieties of spargels. Porous spargels, spargel nozzle, combined agitator and sperger. Number 8 feed pots. They are employed to repellish the fermentator with nutrients and acid or alkali. Silicon tubes serve as feed pots. The products are sterilized in place before being removed or added. Number 9. Form Control It's crucial to keep the amount of form in the vessel to a minimum in order to prevent contamination. Form sensor and a control unit work together to regulate form. The fermenter has a form controlling mechanism attached to a top with an entrance into the fermenter. Number 10. Valves In the fermenter, valves are used to regulate the flow of liquid. Globe valves, butterfly valves, ball valves and diaphragm valves are the most common types of valves used. The air and pipe layout includes of safety valves that can function under pressure. Number 11. Controlling devices for environmental factors. 
to regulate environmental factors like temperature, oxygen concentration, pH, cell mass, levels of vital nutrients, and product concentration, a variety of devices are used. Number 12. Use of computer in fermenter. Fermentators are typically used in conjunction with contemporary automated and semi-automated computers and databases for effective process, monitoring, and data collection. Don't forget to give a subscribe to my channel. Types of Bioreactor The types of bioreactors or fermentator are frequently used in industries are number 1. Continuous Tear Tank Fermenter number 2. Airlift Fermenter number 3. Bubble Column Fermenter number 4. Fluidized Bed Fermenter number 5. Pack Bed Fermenter number 6. Photo Bioreactor and number 7. Membrane Bioreactor Let's start with the first one continuous tiered tank fermenter as you can see in this diagram in a continuous tiered tank bioreactor one or more agitators are supported by a central shaft that is cylindrical and powered by a motor impellers improved gas distribution throughout the vessel is made possible by spargle and impeller agitators a stair tank bioreactor may run continuously in a fermenter. Temperature control is simple, construction is inexpensive, operation requires little training, and cleaning is straightforward. It is the type of industrial bioreactor that is utilized the most. Let's head to airlift fermenter. As you can see with this diagram, typically, Gas liquid or gas liquid solid contact devices employ the airlift reactor. A tower reactor is another name for it. In a bioreactor with an airlift system, the fluid volume is divided into two zones to enhance oxygen transfer, circulation, and for equalization. Only one zone of the two zone system receives gas spurgling. The riser in the zone where gas is perked whereas the downcomer is the zone where gas is not spurred. Aerobic bioprocessing technology uses airlift bioreactors because they can deliver a regulated liquid flow in a recycling system employing pumps. This equipment simplicity of design is that it has no moving components or agitators, ease of sterilization, minimal energy needs, and an expensive price are just a few of its benefits. Number 3. Bubble Column Fermenter As you can see with this diagram, a cylindrical vessel with a gas burglar that propels gas bubbles into a liquid phase or a liquid solid suspension makes up the bubble column fermenter. Use of perforated pipes, plates or metal microphorous sparglers, air or gas is injected into the base of the column. The mixing of oxygen and other performance variables are significantly influenced by the fluid's rheological characteristic and gas flow rate. Internal devices including horizontal perforated plates, vertical baffles, and corrugated plate packings are installed with the vessel to optimize mass distribution and change the vessel's fundamental design. These bioreactors are inexpensive to operate, have simple design and need little maintenance. In biochemical procedures like fermentation and biological faced water treatment, bubble columns reactors are employed. Numerous chemical, petrochemical and biochemical industries are also employing it. Number 4. Fluidized Bed Fermenter as you can see in this diagram, in fluid bed bioreactors, smaller particles are put into beds. This avoids issues with packed bed reactors such as clogging, excessive liquid pressure drop, channeling, and bed compaction. Reactants are injected into the reactor by a distributor pump after the catalyst is placed on the bottom of the reactor to fluidize the bed. Small particles that flow with the fluid and immobilize the cells in these reactors improve mass transfer, 
oxygen transfer and nutrient delivery to the cells. Reaction involving fluids suspended biocatalase such as immobilized enzymes, cells and microbial flocks can be carried out in the bioreactors. In comparison to other catalytic reactors, its key benefit are the capacity to maintain uniform temperatures, simple catalyst replacement and regeneration, continuous and autonomous operation, and shorter gas solid contact times. Number 5. Packed Bed Fermenter You can see with this diagram that it is a solid particle matrix with a bioreactor on or within it either the submerged mode with or without aeration or the trickle flow mode can be used to operate it. Packed bed reactors also known as fixed bed reactors are frequently employed in chemical processing procedures including absorption, distillation, stripping, separation processes and catalytic reactions. In this reactor, the substrate is supported by a sieve through which air is introduced. This reactor has many advantages including a high catalyst conversion rate, simplicity of use, low construction and operating costs, increased reactant and catalyst contact and the capacity to operate at higher temperatures and pressures. Number 6. Photobioreactor as you can see, a photobioreactor is a specially designed fermentation machine that either receives natural light from the sun or artificial light. The tubes or flat panels are composed of light receiving devices and are constructed of glass or more frequently transparent plastic. The medium of this bioreactor may be pumped with the help of solar receivers using centrifugal pumps or airlift pumps. Photobioreactors are typically run continuously at a temperature between 25 to 40 degrees Celsius. Here you can see different types of photobioreactor. We have helical wound tubular loop, second flat panel configuration, third continuous run tube loop and fourth multiple parallel tube. Microalgae and cyanobacteria are grown in biophotoreactors for their photosynthetic production of compounds such as astraxanthin and beta carotene. Number 7 Membrane Bioreactor. As you can see in this diagram, this system removes organic and suspended particles as well as high nutrient levels by combining conventional treatment with membrane filtration. This system uses an aerated biological reactor with immersed membranes. The membrane spore have sizes ranging from 0.035 microns to 0.4 microns. The advantages of this bioreactor are increased with pure oxygen leading to even faster biological treatment systems that offer compact control of COD microorganisms. Let's get to know about the application of these bioreactors. Some of the important applications of these bioreactors are the tank fermentator are used for antibiotics, citric acid, exopolysaccharides, cellulose, chintonolytic enzymes, lacase, xylenase, pectin, and tet lysis, tissue mass culture, lipase polygalactorinase and cysteinic acid whereas bubble column fermenter is used for algal culture gentanolic enzymes as well airlift fermentator is used for antibiotic genolytic enzymes exopolysaccharides prolic acid lacase cellulase lactic acid polygalactorinase tissue mass culture then we have fluid fermentator which is used for the production of lacase. Then we have packed bed fermentator which is used for lacase, hydrogen, organic acids and mammalian cell production. Whereas bioreactor is used for wastewater treatment, water quality management, creation of contaminated soil. Lastly, membrane bioreactor is used for alginate, 
antibiotics, cellulose hydrolysis, hydrogen production, water treatment and volatile organic compounds treatment. Lastly, we'll know the limitations of these bioreactors. Stair tank fermentator limitations are it has high shear stress, high power consumption and moving internal parts. Whereas bubble column bioreactor has low photosynthetic efficiency. Air lift has non-uniform neutron supply, insufficient mixing and high viscosity can limit bulk circulation. Fluid bed fermentator has particle breakup is common, increased reactor vessel size, bubbling beds of fine particles are difficult to predict and are less sufficient, pipe and vessel valves erode due to collision by particles. Back bed bioreactor has undesired heat gradients, poor temperature control and difficult to replace the catalyst. Photo bioreactor the liability problems require temperature maintenance as they lack evaporative cooling, periodic cleaning due to light exposure, and need maximum light exposure. Lastly, membrane bioreactor. Biofilm overgrowth leads to periodic cleaning, and membrane can rupture at high flow rates. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and you got more of knowledge about bioreactors. Kindly don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. You can watch these playlists as well. Thank you staying until the end.